I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm good. It's the end of the week, and I'm looking forward to the weekend. How are you? Yeah, we're, we're recording a little bit later this week, mm-hmm. and it is, it's, been, it's been a week. Actually, it's been a <laughs> month and four days. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> yeah. But it's good. It's good. Um, you know, and, and I, I have to say that I'm, I'm really, and I know you had a very, very busy week. Mm-hmm. all around in every aspect of your life and and I've had a busy week and and it's it's a good busy mm-hmm. because there's a lot of people doing training we are filling classes like we have never filled classes yeah it's amazing it is you know to think that supervisory leadership is sold out a month before the class mm-hmm. is crazy mm-hmm. it's really nice to see that people are investing in themselves and are doing yes. that, oh, absolutely. that development and We've really well, seen it, a, a steady incline too, which is great. Yes, yeah, and you know, really, it fits right into uh, today's post, mm-hmm. which was entitled "Where Are You?" And as I and I and I shared with you before we started recording that this the idea of this actually happened when I was taking one of my walks in the morning. I was listening to an Entree Leadership podcast, and and I heard something I'd never heard before. I knew the concept. But I never knew how fully developed this concept was. Uh, so Ken Coleman, uh, who is, uh, has a radio show, he's employed by uh, Ramsey Solutions and, and does the Entree Leadership um, podcast. He wrote a book called The Proximity Principle. And, and The Proximity Principle basically says, you know, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dumb it down into like 15 seconds. If you want to get somewhere, you have to be around the people that are already there. Mm-hmm. And you have to be doing the things with the people that are already there. And it, it kind of fit in with one of my phrases that I've used over the years and that I, that I stole from my John Maxwell team was, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Mm-hmm. Because you can't learn anything from people in the room if you're the smartest person in the room. So what I did in my post was I pretty much took apart a statement Number two here was, where do I need to be? So the three statements, the three questions, where do, who do I need to know? Where do I need to be? And what do I need to start doing? And, and I decided to drill down in the post this morning on where do I need to be? And, and the key was, you need to be in the right place. But there's a step that, pre- that precedes all of this. And that is this awareness that we have to have of where do we want to be? And who do we want to become? Because mm-hmm. that's key. I, it's, and it's what struck me is when I did a little bit of research um, and I found this was, this was really frightening. One report said that only 3% of people set goals. That, that's scary. Mm-hmm. Because if that number is true, it means that 97% of the people are just taking life as it comes without setting any goals, without making any plan. And then the other part thing that I heard was that only 8% of people who set goals actually achieve them. So I may be wrong on my math. I, I, I quadruple checked your math. <laughs> so I am correct. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. But that means that less than a quarter of 1% of the population actually achieves the goals that they would like to achieve. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. How frightening is that? That was really eye-opening for me. And I I read it over and over and over to make sure that I was reading it correctly and that your math was right. Um but that it, it is really shocking. And the, so and so let me get back to my point. That means that the rest of the people are letting others Mm-hmm. determine everything about their life. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I really want our listeners to do is, who, where do you want to be? No, first of all, who do you want to become? And where do you want to go? Where would you, you know, what's your goal in life? What kind of, what kind of, of, of professional career do you want to have? What kind of home life do you want to have? Mm-hmm. What, you know, what kind of, if, if you're blessed with children, what kind of a parent do you want to be? You know, if you're blessed with a spouse, what kind of a spouse do you want to be? And then the key is once we know what we really want to be and what we want to become, 
now, okay, now I got the clarity. And how do I get where I want to be? And the proximity principle fits so well. Now, I will tell people this, and I, and I say this in all of my goal planning things. I, I, when I was doing a teaching this recently for, for the SUNY ESF, for one of the SUNY ESF's classes, I, I was a guest lecturer for six sessions. And, and I was talking to these young people, and I said, here, I, want, I don't want you to think that you need to plan out your entire life mm-hmm. right now, because it will change. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying you need an idea of where you'd like to go. And I said, for years, I thought that the, what I wanted to do was I wanted to plan. I wanted to be a plant manager. Well, first I wanted to be a tool maker. I wanted to be the best tool and die maker I could. Be. And then I realized, hmm, there's a bit more. Then I wanted to be a plant manager. And then when I was a plant manager, I thought, you know what? I think I'd really like to, to run a company. I'd like to be a president of a company. And I did. And that's where people said, okay, now you can stop. But then I realized, no, that isn't why I exist. Mm-hmm. I don't exist to be president of a company yeah i want to be able to add value to people i want to make a difference in people's lives and that's when where i wanted to be and who i wanted to become changed again to what i'm doing now Mm -hmm. so the example that i'll use is my own and i and i put this in my post is my own life so i wanted to become somebody that developed leadership skills for other people and i wanted to be able i wanted to become somebody who coached people so what did I do? I started reading from people that did it. And then I found myself being certified by a company that certifies people to do it. And then I intentionally continue weekly to connect with these people. And twice a year, once in person and once now, thankfully, virtually, I'm in training to continually to get better. Because what happens is if you pick a place if you pick, so let's go to the right people then. Um, who, who might be the right people? Well, you need to find people that are instructors in the field that you're in. Who are the people that, that do that kind of teaching? That where you want to go? Who are the best of the best, the professionals in what it is you want to do? Mentors. Who could be your mentor? Peers. Who can travel with you? Nobody wants to travel alone, right? And then the producers. These are all things from Ken Coleman's book. Who are the people that create jobs in the area that you want to do this? Have you found them? Are you around them? Are you in proximity to them? Um, what, so what, when I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm thinking that people are going to say it's too simplistic. What are your thoughts about that? Is it too simplistic? See, I guess I had a different point of view. I, I had the tired pa- parent point of view right like I when I think about this I can understand why only three percent of people might be setting goals because it can seem really overwhelming I think that that you are a really good goal setter okay and and you know you might not have always been that way I don't know but I think I wasn't um thinking to from my perspective, like I definitely went through a period of my life where like I was just winging it. And, Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to think about when you're, when you're so in the present, it can be hard to think about the future. Um, again, this is my, (laughs) my tired parent point of view. Um, and so to the, I, I think when you, you really have to do that, that where do I want to be? Who do I want to be? part in depth but Mm. it doesn't have to be complicated like right you i think the important thing is just starting somewhere so if you like if you just say okay i want to study leadership that can be like that can mean a lot of things but that can also mean like okay so this year i want to read 10 leadership books and and develop my my thoughts like of course you probably won't like them all right so you read right, 10 right. and you kind of decide which ones you like which one you don't and and then break that down okay so that's like less that that you know one a month ish um mm-hmm. and then it becomes and then you kind of just go from there so if you look at it as more of like a lifestyle mm. rather than setting like a really lofty goal yep i think it okay. makes it easier to digest like how to get there sure 
And so what, what I'm hearing you say is that as you, so let's say I want to study leadership mm-hmm. because I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet. Mm-hmm. I'm just interested in it. And then you start reading it. All of a sudden you may develop an idea of a greater purpose for your life. Right. And then it's like the I want to study leadership transforms into I want to be a stronger leader. And then once you move past that, the I want to be a stronger leader moves into I want to teach others how to be a stronger leader. Um, and, and it kind of just continues to evolve more like a process and less like yes. a like a pie in the sky so far yes. away. Oh, I love it. I love the process. I love that process idea. And you need to trust the process. Mm-hmm. You know, so many of the so many of the podcasts you and I do talk about a process. Mm-hmm. I love a process. I love a good process. <laughs> and, and because a process simplifies what we're trying to say. Mm-hmm. And and so I I think I think so let me let me touch a little bit more on on our activities in proximity, right? So if we wanted to study leadership, the proximity piece here is I'm reading the books. I'm immersing myself in leadership mm-hmm. thought. And it might be, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my bookshelf right here. Um, books from left to right, Grant, Frederick Douglass, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, George W. Bush, Ronald Reagan. Those are the five, those are six books, seven books right in a row on the top shelf of the bookshelf I'm looking at. Now, every one of those books has leadership principles in it, but all of those books are history books. Mm-hmm. So you just, hmm, what's that going to do for me if I'm around, if the proximity of listening to, and you know, you know, this was interesting because I'm just thinking about it when I look at these books. The reason I started reading those books was my son, Tim. Mm-hmm who said, Dad, you have to read something other than leadership books. So I said, okay, I'll read history books. But when I read the history books, because I'm still around the proximity of this leadership thought, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at these books, and I'm seeing them as the leaders that these men were. And it just starts to clarify for us. Now, so, so you, you need to, one of the things you and I talked about before we hit record was, you know, there are people that say, I want to be a leader but my company doesn't give me a chance to be a leader. Well, who says your company has to give you a chance? I mean, you've shared with me that you're on, are you on more than one board? I'm on one board, just one. One board, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're on a non-for-profit board. Mm -hmm. That's a leadership position. There are so many non-for-profits that are looking for people to help. Mm -hmm. They're they're starving for people to help. Um, School boards. You want to be a leader? Run for the school board. Mm-hmm. It's a great place to hone your leadership and communication skills. You want to learn how to have good crucial conversations? Get on a school board. And you'll begin to practice these things. And the other thing that's going to happen is people will, will, will recognize that you're in these positions. Um, if you're in a faith community, I, I remember when I, was, um, when I was putting my resume together for my first job. Um, I was asking my dad, what should I put on my resume? And he said, you're the president of your church's youth group. Mm-hmm. Put it on your resume. And I'm like, I'm chairman of a youth group. What's that got to... And he, you know, he didn't say it at the time, but he was telling me that's leadership experience. And companies look for those things. Mm-hmm. So there's, there are opportunities. You, have, you can't just assume that someday I'm going to get where I want to go if you don't put yourself in the place to do the work to get there. Uh, one of the things Ken Coleman said was he, you know, he wanted to become a, a better broadcaster. He wanted to be able to do things on radio. But he, he said, I was the most untypical student because he found out that he needed to go get like a broadcasting degree. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't a kid anymore. He wasn't a young person anymore. He wasn't that old. He was probably in his 30s, I would guess. But he said, I had to do it because this is where I, I needed to be in the place where people are talking about these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he talked about the fact that, so practicing it, you, you, you know, you don't get paid to do things the first time. Yeah. People say, I want to get paid. No, you're not going to get paid. This do rem- it for free. This reminded me a lot of a podcast we did about um, inviting people to the table. 
Yes. And how, you know, when you get to that table, you, you need to do a lot of observation, right? And, mm -hmm. and then you start participating and then you start being recognized for your participation. And then you start being asked maybe to a more exclusive table or, or a different table or more conversations. And, it, and it's a, I think this is where the, um, those identifying questions really come into play because if you if you aren't willing to do this work then you probably didn't want to be there bad enough oh yes very good if you're not willing to do the work then you probably didn't want to be there bad enough very good you know when when i hear of trainers and and you know trainers that are some of the best highest paid speakers and trainers in the world and they say rented a room in a hotel, a ballroom, and 50 people registered and like seven showed up. But they did the training anyways. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you do. You know, you know it's, it's kind of like we talked about it on our podcast, on our 200th podcast, where, you know, Engineer Tim said, I'll only do this work if you promise to, week, I don't remember it was 50 or a year, whatever it was six months or a year, unless you're committed to doing that, I'm not going to help you with it. Because he knew you needed, we needed to put in the time. Mm -hmm. Because that, that effort gets rewarded by people listening and, take, and continuing to, to follow it. Um, one of the points in here that, talked about, uh, that, that Ken Coleman talked about was mentors. And I love the way he, he you know, there's all of us, I shouldn't say that, most people that, that really want to grow and develop realize that they need mentors. Now, I'm going to tell everybody, you all need mentors. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us needs a mentor. And we probably can use multiple mentors. Mm -hmm. Mentors are just people that are farther down the road than you and are willing to share their experience with you. But what Ken Coleman says is, you better value their time and never waste it. And one of the things I love to see, and, and I see it with some of my coaching clients, there are coaches, so with my coaching clients, some of them, Every one of them gets a reminder with a questionnaire. It's a, it's a session prep form that they're supposed to fill out before the coaching session. And I even ask them, you know, if at all possible, send it to me two or three days before our session so I have a chance to review it. The people that spend the most time on that grow the most. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm thinking of one, one coaching client, and I won't mention her name because I didn't ask permission, but she... She has grown so much. She has received promotions in her job. She, and, and, and not only does she fill out the form and get it to me ahead of time, but she even puts on the form, okay, the book that you had me read, I learned this, and this is what I did. Mm -hmm. That's what people that understand the value of coaching and mentoring are. You know, they, they get it. They just understand. And so when I see her name pop up on my calendar for the week it's like yes i get to have a conversation with her this week mm -hmm. it's going to be great the other so we have to pay the price with time we have to pay the price with effort you may also have to pay the price with some money don't expect people to give you something for nothing so you get you know and i'm, I'm thinking about opportunities soon i'm hoping that macne will be able to open up our our events again when people can come in person you know, are you willing to be there? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to invest in the training, invest in the council events? You know, maybe your company won't invest in it, but but what what does an individual membership cost now? Is two hundred and something? Yeah, I think it's maybe two twenty nine. Something like that, right? So two hundred and twenty nine dollars allows you to attend any one of our council events. Now, if there's a meal someday, you'd probably there would be a meal fee. But where else can you get access to people for that small amount of money? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, you know, I'm not trying to, this isn't a marketing thing for MACNE by any means, but that's just an opportunity for you. Some people say, you know, I want to learn to be a speaker. Okay, go to Toastmasters. Right. I don't know what Toastmasters costs, but go to Toastmasters. You're mm -hmm. going to get a chance to give speeches. They're going to give you yep. a topic and you need to talk on it. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's and there, there's like a conference for just about anything these days. Yes. Well, I shouldn't say these days. Uh, <laughs> hopefully soon. <laughs> right. There are less conferences today than there were last year. Right. Um, well, I mean, there some of them have gone virtual, right? So there's exactly. that opportunity. But I mean, there are some really high quality, immersive, yes, you know, two day conferences where it's like you're in it for two solid days or three days, right. whatever. And it's, um, the things that's, I mean, that's an investment, right? Like if you, that's time, that's money. Um, that could be time away from work. It could be vacation time, but it's, it's what you come away with, right? It's not yes. just, it's not just, okay, I went and it's over. It's like, okay, doing something with that is right. Is where you really find the value. Exactly. And the value is in the proximity mm -hmm. to whatever it is you want to be. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's, and, it's so, and that's what I love about this principle. It is so, it is so elegantly simple. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it can be tailored to any person at any time in their life. Mm -hmm. Because proximity doesn't necessarily mean I'm there in person. It can start with as simple as a book that you borrow from the library. But get closer to the place. Get, so get closer to the people that are doing what you want to do. Get closer to the places where the things are done that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And start doing those things now. And before long, you will be where you want to be. And you will be who you want it to become. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to find out there's more. <laughs> and you just keep growing. Yeah. So my key too there is... And that's what I, why I use the example of the John Maxwell team. When you find that, when you, un, when you understand where that proximity spot is for you, stay in it mm -hmm. and immerse yourself in it and make sure that the people that you're around are also growing. Because if they've stopped, you're going to end up passing them. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to find with the John Maxwell team were, were coaches and mentors that continually get better. Because they're continually sharing new stuff with me. That's my safeguard that I'm not going to slip backwards if I stick around. If I stick around that. Mm -hmm. So that's it. The proximity principle. I re I encourage people. You know, get get Ken Coleman's book. Yeah. Um, I really it's available I, everywhere. I really like the idea of just like just heading in the right direction. Yeah. And yep. You know, inch by inch, and book by book, and conversation by conversation. If you're headed in the right direction, then exactly. what more could you ask for? Exactly. Plans for the weekend? Because you said it's, it's getting toward the end of the week and you're looking forward to the weekend. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to have our Earth Day celebration. The, actually, the day we are recording, it is Earth Day, which by the time yep. this podcast comes out, it'll be beyond us. But um, it is a very snowy day. <laughs> Today, it is. Which I knew. So we uh, are planning to have our Earth Day celebration, which is one of our spring bucket list items this weekend. And I think we have some maybe 65 degree weather to look forward to for that. So Yeah. Um, awesome. I'm excited to do that. Good. How about you? Good. I have two pear trees I need to plant this Saturday. Okay. So you're having a little Earth Day celebration. I am. I'm, I'm, I have a little bit of an Earth Day. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And just some, some nice outside things just to, you know, I'm hoping that the cold snap that we had has not affected my peach and apple tree. But I don't mm -hmm. think. Because mm -hmm. I don't think the buds were far enough along to. But, but anyway, so that's the plan. Now, right. I do have a quick question. So where did you learn about your seasonal bucket list? Oh, uh, I learned about it on Instagram and I'm trying to think what the name is. It used to be homegrown traditions and now they have a new name. Oh, let me look. Um, home and kind is the Instagram where I found it. And then, um, I started making my own after that. My reason for asking was that was based on proximity. <laughs> True. You placed yourself yeah. in a place where you could be influenced by people mm -hmm. that were living the life that you were looking for. Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd throw that out. Very true. 
So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page.